Hello and buenos dias once again from the Spanish capital Madrid. I'm just making my way into the city's main railway station, Madrid Puerta de Atocha. I've been really looking forward to this one as today I'll be travelling aboard one of Renfe's famous high-speed AVE services through to Valencia over on the Mediterranean coast. Today's route will see us travelling southeast overall, covering the 391 kilometres or 243 miles to Valencia in just 1 hour and 48 minutes. So without further ado, let's check out the station and head to Valencia. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Outside the station, you'll find these rather creepy babies' heads. Um, sorry to give you nightmares. Inside the station, you'll find plenty of ticket machines. However, you'd be daft not to take advantage of purchasing your ticket in advance online if you can, as that will save you a small fortune when compared to buying on the day. You'll find nice and clear departure boards scattered throughout the station, with the information on them being displayed in both Spanish and English. Now of course, I couldn't show you around a Atocha without paying a visit to its iconic tropical gardens. The garden features over 450 different species of plants from all corners of the world. Before too long, it's time to make our way to the high-speed platforms in preparation for boarding. These are well signposted and easy to find, although bear in mind there are two separate floors and departure areas for high-speed services at Atocha. We'll be departing from the lower level today. As is always the case in Spain, you have to go through a security check in order to access the departure lounge for high speed services. This just involves putting your bag through an x-ray machine and walking through a metal detector. You won't encounter any limits on liquids or other sorts as you would in airports. The security check was quick and simple and only took a couple of minutes, after which you'll find yourself in this departure lounge. This just consists of some seating and an overpriced cafe. Before too long, our train is called forward for boarding. Our ride through to Valencia today will be operated by one of Renfe's S102 AVE sets. These absolute beasts feature Bombardier power cars with a rake of Talgo 7 coaches. The S102s first entered service with Renfe in February 2005 and are authorised for speeds of up to 330 km an hour or 205 miles an hour. The service I'm catching today is the 1140 to Valencia Joaquin Soroya, train number AVE 5110. Now, I've booked a Tourista Plus ticket for today's journey, but I thought we'd just quickly take a look at the Tourista or second class seats as we board. As you can see, these are laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. Moving further through the train, we find the cafeteria. While this was still closed as a result of the pandemic at the time of recording, this has since reopened and has drinks and snacks available for purchase. Moving beyond Tourista, we find Tourista Plus. Tourista Plus in this instance means that you get to sit in the big plush leather business class seats, just without the complimentary food service that would usually be offered to business class passengers. Due to the lack of onboard catering at the time of recording, all of business class was being sold as Tourista Plus. For the ride across to Valencia today, I have been allocated Coach 2, Seat 4A, which is on the solo side of the train. As you can see though, this seat unfortunately has very poor window alignment. Now, before we begin blasting across Spain at 300km an hour, I think we should just take a quick look at what this seat has to offer. Even as someone who's 6 foot 1, I found legroom to be really good. The back of the seat in front features the usual gubbins, such as a footrest, a personal litter bin, and a seat back pocket. Each of the airline style seats features this nice big tray table, and I don't know about you, but I'm loving the wooden finish on it. And yes, you'll be pleased to hear that the tray table was indeed nice and sturdy. 
down to the right, you'll find a button that allows you to make use of the seat's pretty generous recline. And down to the left, you'll find controls for Renfei's onboard entertainment system, although as a result of the pandemic, this wasn't being used at the time of recording. Underneath each seat, you'll find a two-pin plug socket, which I'm pleased to say worked as intended. The seats themselves are really comfortable, being both well-shaped and nicely padded, and I think that the lever upholstery adds a really nice touch of class. Lastly, each seat has access to a personal reading light, and there are also window blinds available as well. We depart Madrid Puerto de Atocha bang on time. Thanks to the power of high speed rail, our 391 kilometer or 243 mile journey to Valencia is scheduled to take just one hour and 48 minutes. Shortly after departing Atocha, be sure to look out of the left hand side of the train in order to see the Ave Depot, where we can see various types of Renfe high speed trains as well as Wego Euro duplexes, which I covered in a previous review. We soon find ourselves out of the city of Madrid and accelerating east towards Spain's Mediterranean coast. It must be said that even at 300 km an hour, the ride quality of these trains is remarkably smooth. This is all the more impressive when you stop to consider that there's only one pair of wheels between each of the coaches. It's quite an amazing feat of technology, really. These trains also featured Talgo's passive tilt technology, which allow for corners to be taken at higher speeds while still providing a comfortable experience. As you can see, much of the trip is spent travelling at or close to top speed. I must also say I'm loving the interior of this train. The abundance of wood used gives it a very homely feeling and I really like that lighting has been added on the underside of the luggage rack. Overall a very smart interior and certainly worthy of Spain's flagship train. Right, time for a closer look at what the inside of these trains have to offer. Stacks for larger items of luggage can be found at one end of each coach, although these seem to fill up quite quickly. That said, there's more than enough room for anything up to the size of a carry-on on the overhead racks. Above the aisle, you'll find TVs which are used for showing route information. Usually, these would be used for showing a movie, which I think is quite a cool feature. It was also nice to see that our train was pretty much full. Spain has the largest high-speed rail network in Europe and is second only to China worldwide, so it's nice to see that so many people are choosing to utilise this over flying. Each coach has a toilet situated in the vestibule area at one end. Just like the rest of the train, they were very pleasing from an aesthetic standpoint and I was pleased to find that everything was clean, well stocked and in good working order. <laughs> 
Lastly, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, although I couldn't seem to get it to work. Just under an hour after departing Madrid, we arrive at our only calling point of Cuenta Fernando Zabel. However, the city of Cuenta itself is located some 5 kilometers away. It's not uncommon for smaller AVE stations to be situated some distance from the towns and cities that they serve. As we approach Valencia, we run alongside an adjacent motorway. There's really nothing more satisfying than flying past the much slower cars, is there? Well, I can certainly say that I had a very pleasant time on the Renfe Ave S102. The seats offer a very comfortable experience and the smart interiors provide a very nice ambiance. Couple that with the silky smooth ride quality and it makes for a fantastic experience as you whiz across Spain at 300km an hour. The only slightly disappointing thing though was the lack of any onboard catering facilities. Restaurants in Spain were open as normal at the time of recording, so I don't really understand why this service couldn't be provided. So I guess you're wondering how much all this cost me. My one-way Turista Plus ticket sent me back €45.25, booking just over two weeks in advance. When you consider that Spain's high-speed network isn't exactly renowned for being the cheapest, this isn't terrible value for money in my opinion. For reference, Turista tickets start at around €26, Euros, with Turista Plus starting at around €40. Euros. Personally, considering that this is only a relatively short journey, I think that the Turista seats would offer a more than adequate level of comfort. However, I do appreciate that these are just my opinions, so be sure to let me know whether you'd be happy with the Turista seats, or if you'd splash out on the Turista Plus seats in the comments below. In my experience, Renfe's AVE services are pretty punctual and today is no exception as we pull into Valencia Joaquin Soroya bang on time at 28 minutes past 1 in the afternoon. Taking one last look at the power car, you can definitely see how these trains have earned the nickname Pato or Duck in English, as to me at least, the front definitely looks like one's bill. And with that, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday.